Welcome to MTrip for DaVinci Resolve. This is an all-in-one pack filled with titles, transitions, effects, overlays, everything you need to make your travel vlogs look extra professional and enjoyable to watch for your audience. So let's go ahead and jump into Resolve and take a look. All right, so once you have MTrip installed from the M Installer application, you can locate it under your effects panel right up here. And from here, if you go down to video, transitions, motion VFX, MTrip, you will see we have 17 transitions under titles. We also have 28 typography presets, including descriptions and titles and other kind of miscellaneous typography. We also have 14 effects, 10 looks, six movements and five split screens. So if I come to the very top, click on toolbox, I can just search for M trip and this will let me view everything in one place. And if you have your hover scrub preview option enabled right up here, you can simply scrub through each of these looks and effects and see how they're going to manipulate your footage. You can see this discovery kind of gives you this really cool blurred vignette. Rome also gives you this nice glow dreamy kind of effect. And if you want, you can also apply this over an adjustment clip if you want to affect multiple clips together. So if I just bring in an adjustment clip, maybe I want to drag this over a couple of these shots here and I can drag on Roam preset here onto the adjustment clip and you will see that will have an effect on all of my footage. You can see Adventurer kind of has this nice retro kind of faded look, adds a little bit of green. And the colors look really nice on this one. It kind of reminds me of an old Polaroid camera, you know, those really unrealistic bright colors. So that's a really fun preset to use for travel videos like this. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just delete this adjustment clip. I just want to kind of preview one way that you could use these. Okay, so I'm going to kind of skip around a little bit. Let's go ahead and look at a couple of these typography presets and you'll see why in just a minute. I want to show you how you can sort of integrate typography in with your effects and your transitions and other things like that. So same as before, you can hover over each of these presets, kind of get an idea for how they look. And of course, all of these have completely customizable settings, so you can type in anything you want. You can see this description number four here kind of has separate lines. So the way this one works, let's go over here to the title controls. You can see each line is separated with the enter key and this will automatically cycle between each of those lines. And if you make the duration longer, it will just simply take longer to get through each of these lines. So you can really customize the speed or how much information you want to get across. Like if I simply just copy this, let's just duplicate those same lines again. You can see now I haven't changed the duration or anything, so it's going to get through each of those lines in double the speed because it has more text to get through in the same set duration. Now let's grab this first title here, title number one. This one's the only title that won't actually let you scrub through and get a preview. And the reason why is because it actually uses some of the footage underneath. So you can see right here, this tree is sort of masking the inner fill of this text here. And over here, if I move the content controls, you will see that different portions of the text gets masked or revealed depending on the luminance of the footage that's underneath the title. And if you go down here to title controls, you'll see this range slider here. So if you want to, you can kind of customize and adjust that mask. If you don't want this effect at all, you can simply just toggle on fill. But let's actually see how this could look if we place this right on that horizon line like this. And if we kind of stretch out the out range a little bit, we can maybe try to get this nice little gradient. And whenever it's in the sky, because, you know, the sky has a natural gradient, it almost makes the letters look kind of cloudy and that could be a really nice fit for a shot like this. I'm actually going to move this in time just a little bit. I want it to kind of animate as we're making our way into this shot. So that shot comes on and then our text, let's actually move this back up something like there. So kind of a cool preset that kind of integrates with your footage. And I'm going to add one more typography preset. Let's use description number six. I think this is going to be really useful for all kinds of different projects because you can see here it kind of appears one word at a time down from the bottom. And of course, if you customize this one, no matter what you type in there, it will still animate each of those words. We can make it however big we want to. We can add a drop shadow if we want. You can see here it kind of just animates those words one by one. So a really simple but very useful text preset. 
Okay, so I wanna add a transition to take us from this shot to uh, this shot here. Now, if I use a standard transition like rotation zoom, let's see what this looks like here. You can see we get this nice little zoom out. And if we click on the transition and come up here to the inspector, we have the option to invert that movement. So if you wanted to kind of zoom in and then kind of zoom into that next shot there, you can see we have this nice movement happening to increase the energy of our edit. Now, one thing I want to do to both of these text presets, I'm actually going to come up here and disable the out animation using this little toggle here. So I'm going to click on each of these. That way they just stay on screen until they cut out and they'll just have kind of a harsh cutout. And I'm doing this because I want to have the same transition affect those texts and I don't want to have to worry about kind of multiple animations happening on top of each other. So what I could do is grab the out of both of these texts and then trim so that they kind of end right where this transition down here ends. And if I grab this transition and hold Alt or Option, I can drag it up to these other text elements and that will just create a duplicate. But as you can see, it doesn't really look super integrated. You know, this text kind of stays on screen. The footage beneath it kind of fades, but because each of these text elements do not have any footage to fade into, we're still gonna get this harsh cutoff. So, if I wanted to make this a little bit more integrated, here's what I could do. I'm gonna delete both of these transitions here, and let's extend the output of these so that they're a little bit longer. And I'm just gonna drag all three of these elements. So I've got my footage, both of these transitions all together, and then I'll right click and choose new compound clip. And this will effectively bake everything together. And if we trim this back to the original duration of that footage, let's drag on that same transition come up here to invert that movement again. Now you can see everything kind of fades on to this coming up shot. And that really just brings this whole composition and transition together seamlessly. Okay, so we'll explore a couple more of these transitions a bit later. For now, I'm gonna come right back up here and let's take a look at a couple of these split screen presets. So we have five total presets. This very first one will use two pieces of media. The second one uses three, the third one uses four, and this fourth one uses five pieces of media. And the custom one will just use a single piece of media and you can kind of stack them up. You'll see what I mean in just a minute. So let's actually use this preset number two, which will use three pieces of media. And the way this works is you're gonna stack three pieces of media, just like this. Let's make these the same duration. Now, I don't wanna go into this effect right after we came out of this rotating transition because it might kind of look a little bit too chaotic. So what I'm actually gonna do is kind of let this breathe for just a moment here, and then I'm gonna make a cut on that bottom clip, and then we can select all three of these, right click, click on new fusion clip. And now if I drag on this preset number two here, and now you can see we've got this nice layout with all three of those angles. And with this effect, you can choose vertical or horizontal. This is what our horizontal layout looks like. This might look nicer on a vertical timeline, maybe for social media, or the vertical will give you kind of these three strips from left to right. And of course, you can use these media position sliders to kind of center in on different areas of the frame. You can also zoom in. And this 4K quality option here doesn't really do anything right now. I am in an HD timeline, but if you are in a 4K timeline, this is gonna up res your footage. So if it's originally shot in 4K and you're delivering in a 4K timeline, I'd recommend turning this on so that you don't lose any quality. Otherwise, everything will get kind of resized into 1080p. Now, let's say I change my mind and I actually wanna use four clips in a layout like this. So what I could do is take another clip like this one here. I'm just gonna hit Control X to cut that. And then let's right click our fusion clip and go into open timeline. And what I'll do here is just paste in that additional clip and layer it right on top of these others. So now we have four clips in this fusion clip here. And if I double click down here to get back out to my main timeline, what I could do is come up here and delete this three piece split screen effect. And now let's use split screen number three here, which will use four pieces of media. By the way, you can see this little message up here if you ever get confused or forget which one has which amount of inputs. They all have this little message up here. So you can see this one takes four sources and sure enough, we have all four of those clips that we pasted into this fusion clip. So this one by default will give you this horizontal layout. We could also choose vertical for this one if we want. 
and maybe we will reposition these a little bit. So I want to see a little bit more of the sky on this one. Maybe this one we can zoom in and try to fix the horizon a little bit. And on this last one, let's kind of do the same thing. I'm going to move this down a little and I know that there's like this duck <laughs> that kind of flies out to the frame. So I want to show that. That looks a bit weird. I might have to move this one over to the right a little bit. And I really like the way this one kind of starts with this original shot full screen and kind of crops in revealing these other shots out from the side. I think that one looks really nice. Okay, so I'm just going to slide everything back over here. Let's kind of clean up our timeline a bit. So if I wanted to add a transition in between this fusion composition and this upcoming shot, you can see I can't actually do that because this fusion clip stops right exactly right here. So a transition will not work if I try to add this light leak transition, you can see I can only align it to the right side of that fusion clip. I can't center align it. So what I could do is either drag the beginning of this upcoming shot a little bit to the left so that it comes on earlier. And now I could apply a transition and have that center alignment if I want. Or another option I have, I could also right click and open the fusion clip back up in its own timeline and just extend the duration of each of these clips. That way my overall fusion clip actually has a later output. So now if I add a transition, I don't have to adjust the upcoming shots duration at all. This will just work natively because we've given this a little bit of extra frame handles on the right side of that cut. So now we have kind of a better timing with this particular transition. Okay, so I'm gonna actually extend this clip out so that it kind of lasts a little bit longer. Now I'm going to come up here and let's take a look at a couple of these effects here. I think the dreamy look will work really nice with a shot like this. You can see this one kind of gives you exactly what it sounds like. It looks like you're in a dream. It kind of duplicates the footage and you can adjust how this duplicates your footage. If you come over here to the effects controls, you've got your effects position. So you can kind of adjust the position of those clones. Maybe we want to zoom in a little bit more, move this down and each clone has its individual settings. So you could change the opacity, make it look a little bit more dreamy depending on the shot. This has got a nice balance of contrast. So I think the default settings are gonna work nicely, but if you're trying to use this on a clip that maybe doesn't look good out of the box, you can probably get it to look good if you simply just adjust things like your gamma, your opacity, maybe even the prism blur. This could make the dreamy effect even more pronounced. And that's just one of 14 different effects. All of these effects work really nice with this type of, you know, travel vlog type of material. This shot is actually a pretty good example of trying to use some of these available transitions in a realistic way. So you can see this particular shot has a little bit of roll and it leads into this shot that also kind of has that same roll. So if we come down here, we have this rotation preset here. Let's put this right in between these two shots. You can see it's kind of motivated by the real camera and spins us into this upcoming shot. And with this preset, we could change the angle. If we tried something like negative 180, we can kind of rotate in the opposite direction of the real cameras and kind of have this bouncing effect. That can be kind of a fun way to bridge in between two different scenes. I'm gonna go ahead and just reset that and maybe even dial this down to something like 90 degrees. So it's a little bit less extreme because like I said, there's already enough rotation in these two shots. And I wanna show you another really cool transition. I've never really seen anything like this. The photos transition, let's put this right up next. So this particular preset has three different drop zones. So let's go down here to the transition controls and we can browse for different photos. And you can see right out of the box, these look a little bit too zoomed in, right? So we've got these size sliders. I'm just gonna dial those back a little bit like this and get a better frame. Maybe slide this one over. Let's do the same with both of these other shots. So we have this really cool kind of handmade looking transition that really looks like we made this ourselves and spent a lot of time because it's got our own images in there. So really great touch. And lastly, we also included 10 different LUTs with this pack. And these are actually the same LUTs that are baked inside of the look presets. But if you want to apply the LUTs separately without all the additional effects, you can actually do that right here on the color page. So under motion VFX, you should see M trip right here with all 10 different LUTs. 
Now I'm actually going to open up my clips and you can see down here these are all grouped together. If you don't know how to create a group, you can right click one of the clips and choose add into new group. You can see I've already got a group set up here. And now over here, you can see I've got four dots, I've got my clip section and my post clip section. This is kind of where I've got my overall look for this entire timeline. Now what I'll do is just add another node at the very end here with Alt or Option S and then I can just simply double click and try out a couple of these different LUTs. And you can see down here in my clips, you can see those all kind of update because they are all grouped together. Or we can also choose the split screen option here and I'm just going to set this drop down menu to selected clips and from here if I just select all three of these clips, uh, now you can see we've got all three of them and we can kind of choose different LUTs and just kind of get an idea for how it's going to manipulate all of our footage here. So I like this excursion LUT. I think it works for this style of footage. And I could go into my key panel right down here and just simply lower the gain if I wanted to be a little bit less extreme. So that's pretty much going to be it for this pack. Again, this has everything you need to make your travel vlogs or any kind of travel related video look extra high dollar and really high production value. So it's a lot of fun to kind of mix these effects and typographies and transitions all together to create a really compelling story. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one.